Okay, so before I start giving you an overview, I first like, would like to thank the Deep Carbon Observatory and also the Sloan Foundation, so essentially all of you, because uh, for creating these wonderful opportunities for stimulating discussions and also exchange of ideas with people that normally wouldn't, uh, wouldn't talk to each other, each other at the typical conference such as AGU or Goldschmidt. Uh, these discussions have also uh, helped develop uh, ideas for some parts of the proposal that I'm uh, going to talk about or the program that I'm going to talk about in a moment. So the deep uh, or the uh, ocean floor is really very difficult to access. Um, uh, and despite all these uh, beautiful images that you see in the background, um, in, in fact, it's largely uncharted. And um, we're just beginning to realize that this ocean floor is playing a, a key role in the Earth system. Motivated by this, we have um, developed a proposal for the German Excellence Initiative or Ex Excellence Strategy uh, for a cluster of excellence, a so-called cluster of excellence, and we are a group of 25 PIs led by uh, three lead PIs. I'm one of them, Michael Schulz and Nicole, Nicole Dubillier are the others. And um, this program is uh, right now funded for seven years, but there's a possibility for extension for another seven years. Um, the ocean floor is, as you know, covering about 71% uh, of the Earth's surface, and it's a key interface uh, of the global carbon and nutrient cycles and a host unique and vulnerable ecosystems. And it's a driver and archive at the same time of environmental and climate uh, changes. Um, the ocean floor is also, I would call it, a soft spot in the carbon cycle. Um, you know probably these kinds of depiction of, of the carbon cycle. It's a very simplified version in, in terms of the role of the ocean floor. There's just a one-way flux uh, of carbon into the ocean floor, yet we know that it's a dynam dynamic carbon reservoir where there's also significant recycling of organic matter and also emissions from the ocean floor that interact with climate change. Um, a key property and that's really important is also that the ocean floor is our best archive for information of climate states in the relatively recent geological past, so starting at about 20 to 30 million years ago, when CO2 concentrations were uh, in the range of those projected for the 22nd century. So the ocean floor is really the key to understanding ecosystems and environmental conditions of these times. This is a, a very simplified view of our research program, the structure. So we have, we organize everything about uh, around three research units. They're called receiver. The receiver looks at, pros uh, at the ocean from an ocean floor perspective, essentially at processes that affect the flux of matter to the ocean floor. The reactor, which is probably the most closely linked to the deep carbon observatory, largely in the subsurface, looking at matter transformation and carbon transformation within the ocean floor. And the recorder, as I just mentioned before, is a unit where we uh, analyze information that's stored, that is stored in ocean floor archives. Um, underneath these research units, we have, I would call them, enabling, cross-cutting enabling platforms, one on technology where we develop observing, uh, sampling, and experimentation uh, tools uh, at the ocean floor, uh, a tracers module which is uh, developing and implement, implementing novel molecular and isotopic methods for decoding ocean floor processes, and then a modeling platform where we integrate ocean floor observations into a, an Earth system framework. Um, this is a field-based initiative, so we, our research is usually a sequence from uh, seagoing expeditions, sampling campaigns, and experimentation at the ocean floor, then uh, shore-based analysis in laboratories, and then finally implementation of the data into models. I mentioned early on, research on, at the ocean floor is challenging, so ideally we would, be, would like to be able to 
zoom into, like, like we can do it with satellite images from a, uh, from a um, continental scale to something like an uh, individual organism scale, like, like a human being, but that's not possible at the ocean floor, so you need very specified technology to actually do the same thing and come from an ocean basin scale to uh, a scale where you can study in individual microorganisms, life, deep life, essentially. Um, at Marum, at the University of Bremen, we have a fleet of these underwater technologies, uh, autonomous underwater technologies that we want to equip with chemical sensors in the future, with new chemical sensors, uh, remotely operated vehicles that can guide our sampling, but also uh, so-called drilling devices such as the uh, MEBO, which was, for example, used during the Atlantis Massive Expedition and I at IODP. In addition, we, have, uh, we are also home to the IODP core repository uh, that hosts all the Atlantic uh, IODP and uh, predecessor uh, cores. We have about 150 kilometers of sediment cores stored in our laboratories or in our uh, building. Um, so 100 million years of Earth's history under our feet. And um, that's a major nucleus also for activities in, in Bremen. And we have also have uh, state-of-the-art laboratories for all kinds of chemical analysis uh, of ocean floor samples. I want to give you a brief overview of the research program. I mentioned the three, um, the three research units, receiver, reactor, recorder, and I hope you're not colorblind. In green is the receiver, in orange the react reactor, and blue the recorder. And so we look at um, processes in, in the carbon cycle from geochemical forcing, climate forcing, and geodynamic forcing. So a wide range of time scales also. Um, in green, and I hope I can find the pointer here. In green here we have uh, some cartoons for the receiver. A key element is the biological pump. So we are studying the factors that drive the efficiency um, or determine the efficiency of the biological carbon pump nowadays, but also we want to extract that information uh, from the past. We want to learn how the carbon pump is interacting with other major pools of carbon, such as dissolved organic matter, but also how signals from processes in the biological carbon pump are being transferred into environmental archives. In the recorder units, we, we are exploiting essentially the information, exploring the information of these that are, that are stored in these archives to learn about past ocean circulation, uh, climate changes, past ecosystems and biodiversity, uh, and also processes such as a transfer from terrestrial carbon into the ocean. And then in the re uh, reactor unit, we look at various processes in the subsurface uh, in which organic matter and carbon in general is being transformed. And I want to zoom into that a little bit. And I should say, just to give you an idea of the scale of the program, so each of these units has, follows a three times three arithmetic. So we have three research units. In each unit, we have three seams. And in each seam, again, we have uh, three projects. So 27 projects with each project usually uh, um, hosting several uh, postdocs and or graduate students. And then there are through the uh, cross-cutting and ABLAS another five to 10 uh, project edits. So we're talking about 35 individual projects with several investigators here. Um, so, as an example here, the reactor, our goals are to identify and quantify biogeochemical fluxes in relation to plate, te plate tectonics and we, uh, the chemical and physical factors that define the limits of life in the ocean floor, so a real deep life theme, and uh, the relationships between geological processes, fluid chemistry, and biological activity and diversity at vents and seeps. And to zoom into one of these topics now, uh, theme number one. Um, this is just one example. So, the, about 1% of the global water volume, ocean volume, is constantly in flux in the subsurface and reacts 
uh, with oceanic crust under various uh, chemical and, and physical conditions. And uh, our goal is to analyze the feedbacks between tectonic and hydrologic, hydrological sedimentary and biological systems and to understand the implications of these for biogeochemical cycles of the ocean. And so just as an example here, we have three projects that are dedicated on the one hand to um, tectonic sedimentary hydrological dynamics and at serpentinized mantle at rifted margins. Another project looks at feedbacks between seawater cross interactions and microbial life at rich flanks. And another project at uh, supra subduction zone dynamics. Uh, what vehicles of collaboration do we have? Um, in general, so we have implemented a number of DCO members as collaborators in our, um, in our uh, program. They are named on top, and we have uh, close to a dozen of uh, PIs or investigators that have a clear, strong DCO link. And then we have opportunities, collaborative opportunities. We have on the order of 14 uh, cruises funded directly, and there will probably uh, be added in the next seven years the same number, so close to 30 expeditions where we invite uh, usually international guests, international collaborators, but we also have the Hansen Institute of, of Advanced Studies that I would, would like to highlight here, and I have a list of names here in blue that, of people who have been fellows in the past with uh, various degrees of DCO ties. Four of uh, these former fellows or current fellows are actually in the room, and you can talk to me or Tom McCollum, uh, Brandy Rees, uh, Jan Arment, and who uh, did I forget here? Uh, there's another one, Bess Orchard, sorry, uh, who all know more about the process, how to become a fellow. So, thank you. I'm done with my time. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? No one's standing at the microphones. Okay, so this German Excellence Initiative program is something that's probably not so well known to people in other countries. Yeah. So maybe if you I could can, just say yeah. a few words about... I, I can say a few words about... So that's essentially the, the, the central pillar of the Excellence Strategy. Uh, the German uh, government, I think, has dispersed uh, on the order of... 2 billion during the last round. So we have 55 clusters of excellence. There was a competitive pr uh, process that started out with about 190 pre-proposals on the order of 85 to 90 were then full proposals and the, the 55 of those were funded. Um, and they, those are across all areas of sciences. There are two clusters in the geosciences, one in Bremen and one in Hamburg. The Hamburg cluster is dealing with um, um, uh, climate modeling. So we are uh, looking at funding uh, flows on the order of um, uh, five to eight million euros typically uh, per year in these clusters. And it's a long-term perspective up to 14 years. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.